Hello and welcome to part 2 of this 8 part series where I dissect every difference between the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies. Today we're going to focus on the second book and movie, The Chamber of Secrets. If you haven't seen part 1, it's linked down below. This is going to be a long video, so let's just get into it. Let's get started. I'm going to start all of these videos going over the character differences, but I won't include the characters that I covered in part 1. Although, I did forget about two character differences in the last video, so I'm just going to do them here. One is Neville Longbottom, who has blonde hair, but in the film he of course had brown hair. And second is Seamus Finnegan. He's described as having sandy hair, but in the film he has dark hair as well. Gilderoy Lockhart in the book normally wears a hat, but in the film we never see him with one on. And then we have Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, and he's normally seen wearing a lime green bowler hat and a pinstripe suit, but in the film he has neither his hat nor the suit, although in the later films he would at least have the pinstripe suit. And as for Lucius Malfoy, he had grey eyes in the book, but in the film, Jason Isaacs has blue eyes. And finally, Mr. Weasley is described as a thin, balding man, but the actor that plays him in the movie is actually on the heavier side, and he has a full head of hair with no sign of balding at all. And now we get to the plot. The film starts off at night with Harry alone in his bedroom, but in the book, we start out in the morning at the breakfast table with not only Harry, but all three of the Dursleys. In the book, the Dursleys don't know that Harry isn't allowed to use magic outside of school, so there's a lot of tension, the Dursleys treating Harry like a ticking time bomb, but there was no mention of this in the movie. In both the book and the film, they mention Hedwig being locked up in his cage and Vernon yelling at his nephew for the owl making noise. If Uncle Vernon... Harry but what the movie leaves out is that Hedwig was not the only thing locked up. All of Harry's school supplies are locked up as well, and they're actually in Harry's old room, the cupboard under the stairs. In both the novel and the film, the anticipated business dinner with the Masons is the main focus of that day. But because the movie starts off at night, we don't see what happens throughout that day. One, we get a mention of what Vernon does for a living, which is selling drills. Something that was never mentioned in this film, or any of the films for that matter. Two, we see Harry outside in the yard singing happy birthday to himself, as today was July 31st. Three, Harry sees two enormous eyes in the hedge, which we later find out was Dobby, and this is the first time we see him, whereas in the film, the first time we see him is in Harry's bedroom. Four, we see Dudley come out and make fun of Harry for not having any friends, pointing out that today was his birthday, but he hadn't gotten a single card. This is also a difference in the book and movie, as in the film, Harry tells the Dursleys that he hasn't gotten any letters from his friends all summer, but in the book, he does not admit this to them. As I said, Dudley is the one to point it out. Out. Going back to the daytime that was cut from the movie, we see Harry pretend to curse Dudley in the yard, which he of course could not do for real, but Dudley and his parents did not know that. So, Mrs. Dursley punished Harry for this, first swinging a frying pan at his head, and then forcing him to do tedious chores for the rest of the day. In the film, we see Petunia working on the amazing dessert for that night, which in the movie is a beautiful cake, but in the book, it was actually a huge thing of pudding. Then, this is when the book and the movie meet up again, as Harry enters his bedroom and sees Dobby. In the book, Dobby uses magic to raise Petunia's cake in the air, but as I said, this is pudding in the book. In the film, we see Dobby make the cake fall on Mrs. Mason's head, but in the book, he merely makes the pudding fall to the ground. In the film, the cake falling on Mrs. Mason's head is what made them leave, but that was not the case in the book. In the novel, an owl swooped in and dropped the letter on Mrs. Mason's head, and the owl is what made the Masons leave, as Mrs. Mason was mortally afraid of birds. In the film, the scene ended after the whole dessert fiasco, but that was not the end of it in the book. In the book, Vernon made Harry read the letter out loud, and it turned out to be a letter from the Ministry of Magic that said they detected magic being used there, which was against the law for underage wizards when outside of school, and they said if he did it again, he would be expelled from Hogwarts. The magic that was used was of course Dobby, but they assumed it was Harry because he was the only wizard in that vicinity. This was how the Dursleys learned that Harry was powerless magic-wise when in their home, and this is again where the book meets the film as Vernon puts bars on Harry's window. In the book, we see Harry struggle for three days while in his room, being starving but having to share half his food with Hedwig, and he even thinks about using magic to get out, but decides it wouldn't be worth it if he was expelled. And all of this was of course cut from the movie. Just like in the film, Ron, Fred, and George come to rescue him, and this is where Ron tells Harry that his father works for the Ministry of Magic, whereas in the film, it was at breakfast in the burrow. Dad works in the Ministry of Magic, in the Misuse of Muggle Artifacts office. 
In the film, the bars coming off the window were what woke the Dursleys up. But in the novel, they got the bars off, had the twins pick the lock on Harry's door, walked downstairs to the cupboard, got his stuff out, brought it upstairs, and loaded everything without waking them. But when they forgot Hedwig, she screeched. And that's what woke the Dursleys up. In both the book and the film, we saw Vernon grab Harry's ankle, but unlike in the movie, Vernon did not fall out the window. Also in the film, Harry is rescued on his birthday according to Ron. By the way, Harry, happy birthday. But while this was July 31st in the movie, July 31st was three days ago in the book, so this actually took place on August 3rd. The film left out the whole ride from the Dursleys to the borough, where Harry explains everything about Dobby, his warning, the letters being intercepted by the house elf, and the pudding fiasco. They all then speculated that Draco Malfoy sent Dobby as a prank, as normally, old and wealthy families were the ones to have house elves. The twins then mentioned that Draco's father, Lucius, used to be a big supporter of Voldemort. In the film, Ron says, It's not much, but it's home. But in the book, Ron only says, it's not much, dropping the home part. And Harry's response was different too, saying, it's wonderful. But in the film, he said, I think it's brilliant. These lines were also said outside the burrow, whereas in the film, they were inside. Also, Mrs. Weasley yelling at them took place outside as well, whereas in the film, it was again inside. Mrs. Weasley punished the boys by not allowing them to go to bed, and she instead made them denome the garden, which was of course cut from the movie. When Mrs. Weasley looked at one of Gilderoy Lockhart's books, Fred said, Mom fancies him. But in the film, this line was said by Ron, and it was said in Diagon Alley, not the burrow. Mom fancies him. When Mr. Weasley got home, Mrs. Weasley was furious with him for enchanting the car, which in the book she did not know about. But in the movie, she already knew that the car had been enchanted to fly because she said, Your your sons flew that enchanted car of yours to Surrey and back last night. Most of what happened at the borough was cut in the film, as Harry actually spent almost a month there, whereas in the book, he barely spent a day there. We see Ron's bedroom, which was filled with posters of his favorite Quidditch team, the Chudley Cannons. We hear the ghoul in the attic. We see Mrs. Weasley feed Harry a ton of food to make up for the Dursleys nearly starving him. We see Harry, Fred, George, and Ron practice Quidditch in the backyard. We see Ginny constantly being awkward around Harry, knocking things over like her porridge. And we see everybody be suspicious of Percy for being holed up in his bedroom all the time, as nobody knew what he was doing up there. We of course later find out that he was sending messages to his secret girlfriend and Penelope Clearwater. The book and the film meet up again when they go to Diagon Alley, but in the book, this was over a week after Harry arrived. The twins were the first to use the flu powder to show Harry how it was done, whereas in the book, Ron was the first to go to show Harry. Oh, will you go first, Ron, so that Harry can see how it's done? In the film, Harry just mispronounced the word Diagon Alley when using the flu powder. Diagonally. But in the book, there was an actual reason why he did this. As he threw the powder down, he swallowed a lot of hot ash, and that was what made him say it weirdly. In the film, the glass on Harry's glasses broke, but in the book, the bridge of his glasses broke. In the theatrical release of the film, they cut out what happened next, which was Draco and his father Lucius entering Borgen and Burke, and Harry hiding in a cabinet to avoid them. Which, fun fact, was the vanishing cabinet that Draco used in the sixth film. I always thought that was great foreshadowing. But in the extended cut, which is part of the Ultimate Edition, this scene was in the film. However, since most people don't have access to the Ultimate Edition, I'm going to refer to the theatrical release. But if I ever talk about the extended cut, I'll let you know. So if we go by the theatrical release, the first time we met Lucius in the film was at Flourish and Blots, but the first time we met him in the book was of course at Borgen and Burke. But one thing that wasn't mentioned in the extended cutscene was Draco complaining about how everyone loved Harry, and Lucius told his son that he shouldn't openly dislike Harry, as he was regarded as a hero to most in the Wizarding World. Also, I feel I have to add that in the extended cut, they also show Borgen talking to Harry, but this never happened in the book. In the book, Harry waited for the Malfoys and Borgen to leave before he left, so he did not run into anybody. In the movie, the Weasleys did not seem too worried about Harry, as they just went on with their shopping. But in the book, they were frantically looking for him, so scared of where he could have gone. Unlike in the film, it was not only Hermione that found Harry, but all of the Weasleys alongside her. Also, Hermione did not fix Harry's glasses like in the movie, as underage wizards aren't allowed to use magic outside of school. In the book, it was Mr. Weasley that fixed them. 
Most of their time in Diagon Alley was cut from the movie. The film cut the Weasleys, Harry, Hermione, and Hermione's parents going to Gringotts. And here, we saw how little money the Weasleys had in their vaults. This made Harry feel terrible, especially when he opened his own vault that was filled with gold. After Gringotts, all of them went their separate ways, and the trio went to get ice cream, went to quality Quidditch supplies, went to a wizarding joke shop where they saw the twins and their friend Lee Jordan buying fireworks, and eventually they found Percy, who was reading Prefix Who Gained Power. Then, after an hour, they all went to the bookstore called Flourish and Blots, and this is where the book and the movie meet up again. The film's version of Lucius and Arthur's standoff was far tamer, as they just stare each other down. But in the book, after Lucius said, And I thought your family could sink no lower. Arthur tackled Lucius and slammed him against the bookshelf, and they got into a physical fight until Hagrid broke it up. In the film, Lucius says he'll see Arthur at work. I'll see you at work. But he does not say this in the book because Lucius does not work in the ministry. He actually doesn't have a job at all because he inherited so much wealth. The only thing he really does is being a Hogwarts board governor, but that was a volunteer thing to get him more power. After the standoff in the film, it cuts straight to them at King's Cross, but there was a lot that happened in between these two scenes in the book. We see their time in Diagon Alley come to an end, as Hermione and her parents went to the bus stop, and Harry and the Weasleys went to the Leaky Cauldron and used flu powder to go back to the burrow. They spend another week or so at the burrow, and for their last supper, Mrs. Weasley put together a dinner with all of Harry's favorite foods, and Fred and George entertained everyone with their fireworks. The film also left out their journey to King's Cross on September the 1st. They woke up at the crack of dawn, but still ended up being late, as they left several things behind and had to turn the car around multiple times. Because they were laid, Arthur asked Molly if they could fly, but Molly shut him down right away. In the movie, Ron doesn't put the invisibility booster on until they're already in the air, but in the book, Ron turned it on before leaving. However, as they rose over London, the invisibility booster shut off. Meanwhile, in the movie, the invisibility booster doesn't fail until they're most of the way to Hogwarts. The events that happen on their way to Hogwarts are very different when we compare the book to the movie. In the movie, they don't see the train until much later, but in the book, they stay with the train for the whole ride. Also, the movie did not show how much of a struggle riding in the car was, as they were bored, thirsty, very hot, and they wished so much that they were on the train. And to top it off, the car eventually started to whine, meaning it was breaking down. In the movie though, they had much more thrilling problems. As they were almost hit by the train, Harry fell out of the door and was hanging on for dear life and Ron was just barely able to pull him back up. None of this happened in the book though, this was all made for the movie. In the movie, Ron and Harry just walk into the castle and head toward the Great Hall, but in the book, they stand outside and look in through the window. Harry wonders where Snape is, and the two talk about how they hoped he'd been fired as no one liked him, only for Snape to be standing right behind them. And this is another difference, as Filch was the one to find them in the movie, not Snape. Also, in the movie, McGonagall and Dumbledore arrive out of nowhere, but in the book, Snape is the one to seek McGonagall out, and Dumbledore arrived out of nowhere by himself. In the film, McGonagall is the one to say that they're not expelled, but in the book, this was Dumbledore. After this scene in the movie, it cuts straight to Herbology, but there's a lot that happened in between. We see Harry and Ron leave the office and go back to the Gryffindor common room, where they were greeted with clapping and cheering for their stunt with the car. In the movie, Ron gets the howler from his mother after Herbology, but in the book, he gets it first thing in the morning before class. Also, the howler does not talk to Ginny as it did in the film. Oh, and Ginny, dear. Congratulations on making Gryffindor. We found out that Ginny was in Gryffindor the night before when McGonagall told Ron. In between the talk with McGonagall and Herbology, the film also cut out a scene with Gilderoy Lockhart, where he's seen helping Professor Sprout with the Whomping Willow. He annoys her further by pulling Harry away just before class started, and he told Harry that it was his fault he took the flying car, as he had gotten a taste of fame after being on the front page with him. In the actual Herbology class, the film had the Gryffindors be with the Slytherins, but in the book, they were actually with the Hufflepuffs. This is where we meet Justin Finch Fletchley for the first time, but in the movie, we meet him much later during the Dueling Club. Justin Finch Fletchley, Hufflepuff. Also, in the movie, we see Neville pass out from the Mandrakes, but that never happened in the book. When Harry met Colin Creevy in the movie, it was piggybacked onto Ron getting his howler, but in the book, this was actually its own scene, and they were outside on the courtyard, not in the Great Hall. This scene was also expanded on a great deal in the book. 
Kongwen asked Harry if he could have his autograph, and Malfoy overheard this and started sarcastically asking anyone else if they wanted it too. This caught the attention of Lockhart, who embarrassed Harry, forcing him to take a picture of the two of them to give to Colin. Lockhart then lectured Harry about fame, and all of this was of course left out of the film. In Lockhart's class in the book, he starts by giving the students a quiz with nothing but questions about himself. Hardly any of you remember that my favorite color is lilac. This was in the extended cut, but it was left out of the theatrical cut. In both the book and the movie, the Pixies take Lockhart's wand, but in the book, there's the added detail of them throwing it out the window. In the movie, the scene ends with Neville hanging from the chandelier, but in the book, the chandelier gave way and crashed down during the chaos with Neville still on it. Also, the kids didn't leave until the bell rang, whereas in the movie, they all just ran out before class even ended. Lockhart then followed them out the door, while in the movie, he ran into his office, not the hallway. In the book, the standoff between the Slytherin and Gryffindor teams happened on the Quidditch pitch, while in the film, it took place out on the courtyard. Ron and Hermione came down from the stands in the book, as they were there to watch Harry practice, but in the film, they just happened to be sitting there in the courtyard when they showed up. After Draco called Hermione a mudblood in the book, Alicia yelled at Draco and Fred and George jumped at him, but the only person to step up in the movie was Ron. In the movie, Hermione knew what mudblood meant and she explained it to Harry, but in the book, Hermione did not know what it meant until Ron explained it to her. In the film, Hagrid said the line, There's some wizards, like the Malfoy family, who think they're better than everyone else because they're what people call pure blood. But in the book, Ron was the one to say this. In the movie, we saw Harry have his detention with Lockhart for flying the car, but the movie left out Ron's punishment, which was polishing the trophies in the trophy room, something that was difficult as he was still throwing up slugs from earlier that day, and he had to clean one trophy for a boy named Tom Riddle multiple times because he kept puking on it. After Harry hears the voices in Lockhart's office, he meets up with Ron and only Ron, whereas in the movie, he meets up with Hermione as well. In the film, this then leads us to Mrs. Norris being petrified, as they lump these two nights together. But Mrs. Norris was not petrified until Halloween, which was at least a week away. Instead, after Harry told Ron about the voices, the two just went to bed. There was a great deal that happened in between Harry hearing the voices and Halloween, all of which the film skipped over. We see Harry come back from a rainy Quidditch practice, and he gets the halls very muddy. He then runs into a rather upset, nearly headless Nick, who explains that the headless hunt will not let him join as his head wasn't fully chopped off. Filch then yells at Harry for dragging mud in, so he takes Harry to his office. While in there though, they hear a huge bang, and Filch runs after Peeves, leaving Harry alone in his office. Harry finds something on his desk that shows that Filch is trying to learn simple beginner spells. Filch then returned and noticed that Harry moved it. Half furious, half embarrassed, he sent Harry on his way. Harry then runs into Nick again and finds out that Nick had convinced Peeves to make that bang so Harry would not get in trouble. Because of this, Harry feels obligated to come to Nick's death day party on Halloween. The trio goes to his death day party on October 31st, and they're the only living people there and were amongst hundreds of ghosts. This is where we're introduced to Moaning Myrtle for the first time, whereas in the film, we don't meet her until they start brewing the Polyjuice Potion, which was weeks later. The trio eventually leaves the party to go to the feast in the Great Hall, but as they were going, Harry started to hear the voices again, and this is where the book and the movie meet up again plot-wise. In the book, though, they were coming from the Death Day party, whereas in the film, they were coming from detention. In the film, Hermione says that the writing on the wall was written in blood. It's written in blood. But in the book, it was paint. The discussion about the trio and Mrs. Norris happened in the hallway for the film, but in the book, they all went to Lockhart's office and it took place there. A few things were cut from this scene in the movie. One, Lockhart says the cat was murdered, only for Dumbledore to say that she was still alive, making Lockhart look like an idiot. Two, Filch mentions that Harry knew he was a squib after reading what had been on his desk, which is later explained to be a person born into a wizarding family, but has no magical ability themselves. In both the book and the film, Harry asks Ron and Hermione if he should have told them about the voices, and in the movie, Hermione says, No, Harry. Even in the wizarding world, hearing voices isn't a good sign. But in the book, that line was actually very smartly said by Ron, not Hermione. Ron then said that Filch being a squib makes it clear why he hates the students so much, as he's jealous of them. The movie leaves out a few things after the chamber is opened. One, Ginny is very disturbed by the attack. 
Two, when Justin Finch Fletchley saw Harry in the library, he immediately turned and walked in the other direction. And three, the movie cut Hermione reading everything she could to figure out about the Chamber of Secrets, but she found nothing. This led her to ask about the chamber in class, and in the movie, she asked McGonagall, but in the book, she asked Professor Binns, the history of magic teacher, and he was the one to explain it to them. Also, it's worth mentioning that Professor Binns was a character that was left out of the film series entirely. After class, the trio walked past the scene of the crime looking for clues, and this is when they saw the line of spiders, whereas in the movie, they saw the line of spiders the night of the attack. In the movie, the trio was able to get the book that explains Polyjuice Potion right off the shelf, but in the novel, it was not that easy, as it was in the restricted section. However, they merely tricked Lockhart into allowing them to get it. In the movie, they just looked at the book in the library, but in the novel, they go to Mooning Myrtle's bathroom to read it. Also, this shows us Myrtle's bathroom much sooner than in the movie, because in the movie, we did not see it until after the Quidditch match and after Harry was in the hospital wing. The Quidditch match has many differences when we compare the book to the movie. First of all, before the match, Oliver Wood told Harry to get the snitch or die trying, which we did not see in the movie as we came in halfway through the game. Second, it was pouring rain for this match, whereas in the movie, it was a bright sunny day. Third, Lucius Malfoy was not at the match in the book. Fourth, Wood was not knocked out of the sky like in the novel. Fifth, Fred and George tried to protect Harry from the bludger when it went rogue, but after falling behind 60 to nothing, they call timeout. Here, Harry tells the twins to leave him, and though they put up an argument and yell at Wood for telling Harry to die trying to get the snitch, the twins agree. In both the book and the movie, while Harry talks to Draco, the snitch goes right next to his ear without Malfoy noticing. In the book, the bludger breaks his arm at that moment, but he pushes the pain down and flies straight toward Draco to catch the snitch right by his ear. In the movie though, there's a whole sequence after this. As they go into the stands, fly inside the arena, they have Malfoy fly off his broom, collapse, and get hurt, and then that's when Harry breaks his arm and catches the snitch. But none of this happened in the book. All of the action in the stands and being inside the arena was made just for the film. In both the book and the movie, Harry falls as he catches the snitch, but the difference is, in the book he passed out, which was not the case in the movie. In the film, Hermione stops the bludger from going after Harry. Benito, but in the book, the twins were the one to stop the bludger from hurting him. As I said, Draco did not get hurt like in the movie, so he was not in the hospital wing with Harry. Mr. Malfoy, stop making such a fuss, you can go. In the film, we saw them brew the Polyjuice Potion, but the movie left out the trio stealing ingredients from Snape's office to do so. During class, Harry threw fireworks into Goyle's cauldron and it exploded, showering the whole class with the potion. In the chaos, Hermione snuck out and stole what they needed. When Lockhart was hit by Snape's spell in the dueling club, he was shot off the stage and smashed into a wall, but in the film, he was merely knocked backwards a bit. In the movie, we saw Draco and Harry face off while everybody else watched, but in the book, everybody participated. Lockhart and Snape separated everyone into pairs, and Hermione was paired with Millicent Bulstrode, a character that in the film is not mentioned until much later. Millicent Bulstrode, Slytherin. During this practice where everybody was participating, it was a disaster as almost everyone was dazed. Neville Longbottom and Justin Finch Fletchley were lying on the floor, Ron was holding a very hurt Seamus thanks to Ron's broken wand, and Hermione was in a headlock by Millicent Bulstrode. Lockhart then realizes that he should teach them how to block spells, and this is when they decide to just do Harry and Malfoy like in the movie. I'm scared, Potter. You wish. When the trio left the dueling club after Harry spoke Parseltongue, Ron was the one that gave Harry all of the information on the snake language, but in the movie, Hermione did. The next day in the novel, Harry goes looking for Justin, and while in the library, he overheard some Hufflepuff students talking about how he was the heir of Slytherin, and that Justin was hiding from him. This was left out of the theatrical cut of the movie, but this was actually in the extended edition. If Potter's marks it down as his next victim, it's best to keep a low profile for a while. However, in the book, Harry confronts them and he got into an argument with Ernie McMillan. But in the extended cut scene, Harry just walks away without revealing himself. The movie then cuts right to Harry finding Justin's petrified body. But before that in the novel, Harry ran into Hagrid, which again is in the extended cut of the movie. 
During this, we also got the detail that the roosters on the grounds were being killed, which we later find out was Ginny possessed by Voldemort, as Voldemort knew that roosters were a basilisk's weakness, so he of course had to get rid of them. In the book, nearly headless Nick turned black when he was petrified, but in the film, he just remained the normal ghostly color. In the movie, it was Filch that found Harry there, but in the book, it was Peeves. Also, in the book, it was similar to Mrs. Norris's attack, as everyone walked up to find Harry at the scene of the crime, making him look even more guilty. But in the movie, only McGonagall walked up. When Harry was in Dumbledore's office, he put the sorting hat on to talk to it. But in the film, he just talked to it while it was up on the shelf. He did not put it on. When Fox caught on fire in the book, Dumbledore entered from the office door. But in the film, he entered from above his study. The movie cut most of Christmas. The day started with Hermione bursting into Harry and Ron's dormitory to wake them up. She gave them their presents and said that the Polyjuice potion was ready. In the film, however, this scene of course happened at night and in the Great Hall. The movie also failed to mention that Hermione was able to use Millicent Bulstrode's hair without having to lock her in a broom cupboard like they did for Crab and Goyle because she went home for the holiday. In the film, the three drank their Polyjuice potion out in the open, but in the book, they each took a stall. This also meant that Harry was not looking in the mirror when he transformed like in the movie. In the movie, they have their own voices when transformed. Bloody hell! We still sound like ourselves. But in the book, they have Crab and Goyle's voice. The movie cut Harry and Ron not being able to find the Slytherin common room, first asking directions from a Ravenclaw girl, then getting lost in the dungeons walking deeper and deeper under the school. And by this time, they had wasted over a quarter of their hour with the Polyjuice Potion. The line where Draco says, I didn't know you could read was not in the book. That was actually improvised by Tom Felton. While in the Slytherin common room, Draco shows the two an article from the Daily Prophet about Arthur Weasley being fined for bewitching the flying car, a detail that was left out of the film. In the movie, they also left out the detail of Malfoy saying he wished he could help the heir of Slytherin. Malfoy also revealed his father's secret hiding place in their mansion, which Ron would later give to his dad to bust Lucius, another thing that the movie did not cover. In the book, Hermione spends a week in the hospital wing, and Ron and Harry visit her every day, which we did not see in the theatrical cut, but we saw a bit of this in the extended cut. When Harry and Ron find Tom Riddle's diary, the film cut out the part where Ron remembered the name Tom Riddle, as he had spent his detention cleaning his trophy numerous times thanks to the slugs he was puking up on it. However, once again, this was in the extended cut, but Ron says this in the hospital wing, whereas in the book, he said this in the bathroom when they first found it. The movie caught all of Valentine's Day, where Lockhart brought a dozen dwarfs dressed like Cupid to the school to give out valentines. Harry got one from Ginny, but he tried to duck out before the dwarf started singing, so the dwarf grabbed his bag and ripped it. Ink spilled out on all of his things, including the diary. Malfoy picked the diary up, and Harry used the disarming charm to get it away from him. This is actually the first time we see Harry use the Expelliarmus charm, and this of course becomes Harry's signature move whenever he's in combat. But anyway, Malfoy then tells Ginny that Harry did not like her valentine, but Ginny was more focused on the diary that Harry had, as she had tried to get rid of it herself. Then, the book and the movie catch up to each other when Harry is pulled into Tom Riddle's memory. Before that in the movie though, we watch as ink disappears when it hits the page. However, in the book, Harry realized this in a different way. When his bag ripped and everything was covered in ink, he realized the diary was spotless. It had just absorbed the ink. The memory that we saw in the book is a bit different than what we saw in the film. In the book, the memory starts in the headmaster's office, but in the movie, Harry was brought to a corridor. Harry watches as Tom talks to the then headmaster, Armando Dippet. We see Tom have the same conversation with Dippet as he did in the movie, but in the movie, this conversation was of course with Albus Dumbledore instead. Also in the book, we never saw the dead body of Myrtle. That was just in the film. And one more difference with the memory was Hagrid tackling Tom as he went after Aragog, which he did not do in the film. In the film, the next attack happened without Harry really knowing, as he was out at the Quidditch pitch. But in the book, Harry heard the voice just like the last time before leaving for the Quidditch pitch. He asked Ron and Hermione if they heard it too, and after they both said no, Hermione suddenly said that she thinks she understands something, and she ran off to the library. And that was of course where she was petrified. Also, the book left out Penelope Clearwater's attack, a Ravenclaw girl who was also petrified right near Hermione, and she was actually Percy Weasley's secret girlfriend. In the movie, Dumbledore's final words before stepping down were, You will find that help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who 
ask for it. But in the book, there was a bit more to this, as he first says, You will find that I will only truly have left this school when none here are loyal to me. In the movie, Ron and Harry follow the spiders right after Hagrid's arrest, but in the book, several days go by before they do so. In those few days that were cut from the movie, we see Ernie, the Hufflepuff that Harry had argued with in the library, apologize to Harry, saying that he knew he would never attack Hermione, who was his best friend. The film also cut out Draco strutting around the school, all because his father was the one to get Dumbledore sacked. Right after Ernie apologized to Harry in Herbology, Harry notices a line of spiders that were headed to the Forbidden Forest, but again, he does not follow them yet. In the next class, which was Defense Against the Dark Arts, Harry passes Ron a note saying that they should go into the forest that night. They follow the spiders from the castle, whereas in the movie, they follow the spiders from Hagrid's hut. In the film, Harry, Ron, and Fang just walk into Aragog's territory, but in the book, the three were seized and carried into his territory by horse-sized spiders. When it comes to their escape, the movie had a much more dramatic sequence. As the car went backwards, flew over a hill, they had a jump scare where a spider grabbed Ron when they thought they were safe in the car, and the car flew out of the forest. However, in the book, they just got into the car and drove off with no problem. Also, the car did not fly in the book, it just drove on the ground. On top of that, Ron had to drive the car in the movie, but in the book, the car drove itself and Ron just sat there. When they got back to their dormitory, Harry and Ron put together that Moaning Myrtle was the victim of the attack from 50 years ago, and they do this through what Aragog told them, but in the film, they don't realize this until much later. Remember what Aragog said about that girl 50 years ago? She died in a bathroom. What if she never left? Moaning Myrtle. In the movie, they cut straight from the forest to them visiting Hermione, but the film left out a great deal that happened in between these two scenes. In the Great Hall at breakfast, Ginny went up to Ron looking very nervous, and she said she had to tell him something, but she ran away when Percy came up to them. They also cut what led up to Harry and Ron visiting Hermione. Ron and Harry had been trying to sneak off to Myrtle's bathroom ever since the forest, but it was difficult to do so with all of the rules set in place for safety. One day, though, they got their chance when they told Lockhart he did not need to escort them to their next class, and he stupidly agreed. Harry and Ron then snuck off to Myrtle's bathroom. However, they were stopped by McGonagall, and to get out of trouble, Harry lied and said that they were sneaking off to see Hermione. This unexpectedly made McGonagall tear up, saying that every Everything going on was hardest on the friends of the victims. She then escorts them to the hospital wing to see Hermione, and this is where the book and the movie meet up again. In the movie, Ron and Harry figuring everything out took place out in the hallway, but in the book, they put all of this together in the hospital wing while next to Hermione. In both the book and the movie, McGonagall spoke over the loudspeaker telling the staff to meet, but where they're told to meet is different. In the movie, it's on the second floor corridor where the note was written, but in the book, she said to meet in the staff room, and we did not see the note. McGonagall merely told the teachers what the note said. Also, the note was written right below the first note in the book, but in the movie, the first note was not seen with the new one. On top of that, Ron and Harry listened by just being around the corner for the film, but in the book, they hid in the closet of the staff room. The movie cut right to Harry and Ron going to Lockhart, but in the book, we have that ominous moment of Harry, Ron, Fred, and George sitting alone at the fireplace, not saying a word to each other, so upset about Ginny, who they presumed to be dead. Meanwhile, Percy went off to write to their parents the bad news. In the movie, Harry and Ron just point their wands at Lockhart, but in the book, Harry used his signature spell to disarm him, and when Ron caught the wand, he threw it out the window. The movie cut some of Myrtle's story about her death, as she said she haunted the girl that made her cry the night she died, which of course brought her to the bathroom where she was killed. In the movie, Harry is able to open the chamber up on his first try, but in the book, it took him two tries, as the first time he tried to speak Parseltongue, he spoke English. In the movie, they say that the basilisk is 60 feet long. Whatever shed this must be 60 feet long. But in the book, it was only 20 feet long. In the book, Tom Riddle's image was seen as blurry because he was just a memory, but in the movie, he was solid as could be. When Fox came down in the book, music was issuing from him, and it made Harry feel as though his heart was swelling to twice its normal size, but there was no music coming from the bird in the movie. Also, after giving Harry the sorting hat, Fox landed on Harry's shoulder and stared at Riddle, and he stayed there until he went after the basilisk, whereas in the movie, he disappeared after dropping the sorting hat. He did not sit on Harry's shoulder. When Fox blinded the basilisk, he again issued music, which was not the case in the film. 
In the movie, we see Harry run into the pipes, trick the basilisk by throwing the rock, come out of the pipes, talk to Voldemort for a while, then see the basilisk smash through the floor. However, none of this happened in the book. After Fox blinded the basilisk, there wasn't much that happened after that. Harry merely grabbed the sorting hat, and in both the book and the movie, the hat reveals the sword of Gryffindor to him. But how this happened is different in each medium. In the film, it just shows up when the hat is on the floor. But in the book, Harry put the hat on, asked it for help, and then felt the sword hit his head. In the movie, we see Harry climb up on the statue of Slytherin. But this wasn't in the book, he was just on the ground when he stabbed the beast. They of course had to get him higher in the film, because the basilisk is 40 feet bigger on screen than it was on page. After the basilisk was killed, the order of what happened next differs for each medium. In the film, Harry destroys the diary, Ginny wakes up, and Fox heals Harry with his tears. But in the book, Fox heals Harry first, second we see the diary get destroyed, and third, Ginny wakes up. The movie cuts from Fox taking them out of the chamber to Harry and Ron in Dumbledore's office. But in the book, we see the four of them go to McGonagall's office where McGonagall, Dumbledore, and Mr. and Mrs. Weasley are. Here, Harry tells the whole story of what happened and what led to it. And Mr. Weasley scolds Ginny for trusting the diary. The film also left out the amazing moment when Dumbledore says to Lockhart, Impaled upon your own sword, Gilderoy. When everybody else left, Dumbledore and Harry have their conversation in McGonagall's office, whereas in the movie, they had it in Dumbledore's office. Dumbledore did not have Ron send a letter to Azkaban like in the film. Dumbledore instead gave him the task to take Lockhart up to the infirmary. In the movie, Harry reveals that he knows Dobby and reveals Dobby helping him to Lucius when he says, Dobby, so this is your master, the family you serve as the Malfoys. Mm -hmm. I'll deal with you later. But in the book, Harry is not dumb enough to do that, and he keeps his mouth shut. The line where Lucius says, Let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. And Harry responds saying, Don't worry, I will be. Was not in the book. This was improvised by Jason Isaacs and Daniel Radcliffe. In both the book and the movie, Harry called Lucius out for giving Ginny the diary. But in the book, this happened when he was still in the office, whereas in the movie, it took place out in the hallway. I think you slipped the diary into Ginny Weasley's cauldron that day at Diagon Alley. In the movie, Harry handed Lucius the diary with the sock inside of it. But in the book, Harry handed Lucius the sock with the diary inside of it. In the film, Lucius gave Dobby both the diary and the sock, but in the book, he ripped the sock off the diary and tossed it aside to Dobby, and that was how Dobby was freed. In the film, Lucius was about to use the killing curse on Harry, but in the book, this ridiculous moment did not happen. The movie left out the fact that Harry and Ron got 400 points for Gryffindor, which secured Gryffindor the house cup for the second year in a row. In the movie, Hermione ran in and hugged Harry, then awkwardly shook Ron's hand. But that did not happen in the book. She merely ran in chanting that they solved it. In the film, we see everybody clap when Hagrid returns. But in the book, this was not a big deal, as he merely walked in to no applause. The applause in the book was actually everyone cheering at Dumbledore's announcement that Lockhart would be unable to return the next year, and both students and teachers cheered. The applause is not where the book ended the way it did in the movie. In the book, we follow them as they go on the Hogwarts Express, and here, they practice disarming each other, play Exploding Snap, and Ginny tells everyone that she walked in on Percy kissing his girlfriend Penelope Clearwater. When they arrived at King's Cross, Harry wrote down the Dursley's telephone number for Ron and Hermione. Hermione then asks if the Dursleys would be proud of him for what he did that term, and Harry laughs in response saying that they'd be furious he didn't die in the process. And there you have it. Every difference between the Chamber of Secrets movie and book. Stay tuned for part 3 where I dissect the Prisoner of Azkaban book and movie. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just here to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed to the left. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other things like previews and behind the scenes, become a patron today. Also, you can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki. I also do some fun stuff on TikTok and Twitter that I think you guys would really enjoy if you enjoy what I do here on this channel. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.